Now, let's take a look at example 2, question B, where the question asks us to determine the limit for the function t squared minus 1 over t minus 1 as t approaching 1. So, let me write the solution to this problem. So, according to the laws of limit, limit, t approaching 1 by using the quotient rule t squared minus 1 over limit for function t as t approaching 1 so you will end up having 0 over 0 so you have to apply appropriate algebraic techniques in order to avoid your answer written in indeterminate form which has been suggested by the author when the function is in polynomial form, you can always apply factorization in order to avoid your answer written in indeterminate form. In this case, I will factorize the numerator part. I will get limit t approaching 1, t minus 1, t plus 1. Divide, divide by limit for t minus 1 as t approaching 1. So in this case, since they share the common term, which is t minus 1, we can simply cancel it out. So I will get limit of t plus t plus 1 for as t approaching 1. So my final answer will be 2. As simple as that. Now, let's discuss question D in example 2. In this question, if you choose to solve it by using limit law techniques where you can apply the quotient rule and use direct substitution, you will end up with indeterminate form which is 0 over 0. To avoid this to happen, you have to apply appropriate algebraic techniques to avoid your answer written in indeterminate form. But since it involves a radical function through the notes that we have seen previously, the author will suggest us to solve it by using multiplication of conjugate. By using your knowledge on conjugate, as you can see from here, I have jot down the information regarding conjugate. The conjugate of a two-term expression is just the same expression with the uh, subtraction switch to addition or vice versa. Okay, so let me explain to you how to multiply conjugate to solve this or to find the limit by using the analytical approach for this question. In this case, the radical function appear at the denominator part. So, you will get x minus 1 over x minus 1 for x larger, not larger, x approaching 1. So, multiply the conjugate. Okay, in order to multiply the conjugate, you have to make sure when you introduce the conjugate, you won't like to change the question. Hence, whatever changes happen at the denominator part must happen also at the numerator part. Okay, in this case, I will multiply set x plus 1. Okay. Whatever changes I apply at the denominator part, I will apply it at the numerator part. As if I don't change the question. Okay. And then take a look at the second tips. The product of conjugate is always the square of the first thing minus the square of the second thing. In this case, the first thing is referred to x and the second thing is referred to 1. Therefore, if I were to use the tips given, I will get limit x approaching 1 
in this case I will get x minus 1 set x plus 1 over x set x squared minus 1 squared which is x minus 1 x minus 1 times set x plus 1 over x minus 1 since there are common terms in the denominator part and the numerator part I can cancel it all together then I will find the limit for function x set x plus 1 as x approaching 1 my final answer will be 2 so that's how you answer this question so I really hope you can spend some time by using the knowledge that we have shared from one example to another to solve the rest of the question in example 2 and some of the question in the exercise thank you